Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And today's review is of a fountain pen. Please forgive my sojourn into the world of pencils, ballpoints, and rollerballs last Wednesday. It won't happen again, unless it does. And for that, I apologize. All right, all right, I apologize. You're really sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I apologize unreservedly. Today I'm going to review a fountain pen I received way back last May, but I've not been able to get to because people keep giving me sh uh, stuff. Let's go over all this stuff. Request denied. I think this will be the fifth Hongdian fountain pen I reviewed. I was really impressed with the last one I reviewed here. That was the Hongdian 1841. In fact, it might make the best of 2021 list coming in a video this December, just in time for the lucrative gift giving season. Oh. I know it's bad form to mention that holiday before we're done with Halloween, but I do have something special coming for Saturday, October 30th, the day before Halloween. This skeleton fountain pen. I will review this gold Laban skeleton on the eve of Halloween. pre evening ween? That's not afternoon. That's pre-evening. It better defines the ambiguous period between afternoon and evening. pre evening so stay tuned for that scary review, kiddies. Oh! Oh! <laughs> stay tuned this Saturday night for Monster Chiller Horror Theater when we present that blood-curdling classic, Dr. Tom's 3D House of Slave Chicks. But back to the world of the living. And here is the Hongdian 6016. I was intrigued by this fountain pen because it bears some similarities to the Moon Man P135 and the Moon Man M1000. <clears throat> there. Oh, that's heavy. Now I have to put this Moon Man M1000 back where it belongs after this review as it keeps my door from slamming shut. And let's see what these three pens have in common right now. I really think there is something to this pen gravity theory of mine. Uh, I mentioned before that even though I order things at many different times separately, uh, they all seem to converge on my mailbox at once. More pens have arrived. When I got to my mailbox, I was expecting two, and I got three packages. And on to the next package. Interesting, they didn't even put it in the sleeve, just gave me the sleeve. Well, I would have put it in the sleeve. If that's what she said. Oh, some ASMR crinkly. <laughs> so, this is the Hongdian 6016. When I got this, it's a wooden shafted, it's a wooden barreled pen, but it looks so similar to the Moon Man P135. I will clean this one out and do a full review and a comparison with the P135. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And after the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Overall, the pen is a medium-sized cigar shape. Here is the pen up against the ubiquitous, omnipresent, and totally overrated Pilot Metropolitan. Please excuse my failure to eschew obfuscation and circumlocution, but words often fail me when addressing mediocrity. My house is made of mediocrity. The pen has a chromed metal cap and clip, a wooden barrel, and a bullet-shaped chrome metal end finial. The cap is adorned with Chinese characters, pictograms, and hieroglyphs depicting the symbols and animals representing the Chinese years. Let's get up closer so we can see, starting with the rat, the ox, the tiger, the rabbit, the dragon, the snake, the horse, the sheep, the monkey, rooster, dog, and under the clip there somewhere is a pig. What does the fox say? 
So to write with this pen in the present tense of 2021, you must orient the cap with the ox facing up, I think. If you dial back to the year of the pig, or 2019, you can totally avoid the plague year of the rat, 2020. This is 2020. <laughs> A time-traveling fountain pen, very cool. It must be some kind of hot tub time machine. The top of the cap is a bullet shape, which tapers up to an end, which has a raised ring and the words Lan Tian, Hong Dian, and the model number 6016 stamped into the metal. The clip is a very nice sleek shape and extends on what looks like a cantilever out of the cap. It is, however, very, very stiff. I wish they would make these clips so they don't just look cantilevered, but are, in fact, cantilevered, and will function with one hand by squeezing the back end of the clip like this, like a clothespin. There's a very small step down to the wooden barrel, which tapers in a gentle curve all the way down to the bullet-shaped chromed metal end finial. The wood is very smooth to the touch and seems to be well sealed in matte polyurethane lacquer. The end finial has a couple of grooves on it, and this pen has some cyan or acrylate glue residue uh, splashed on it or dripped on it right there, so I assume the end finial is glued in with crazy glue. The cap unscrews with one, two, and a half turns, which is at least half a turn past my tolerance level, to reveal a tapering chromed metal section and number six size steel nib. The section is separated from the barrel with a bevel, and then some very rounded cap threads, and then the taper of the section. There are seven rings on the section, which really do help keep this metal section from being slippery. I'm really pleased with that. There's a small flare towards the nib as well. Let's get a closer look at this nib. I appreciate the number six size nib here, as usually these size Chinese made pens sport a number five, uh, and I like big nibs, I cannot lie. I like big butts and I cannot lie. <laughs> this one is chrome with some really nice scroll work around the border. 1997, which is the incorporation year for Hongdian. And then the Hongdian logo and the words Lan Tian Li Shui Zhejiang. Zhe Jiang and an F for fine. Those words translated mean blue sky happiness and luck with fire i'm just kidding i have no idea what it means except that i think they are locations or districts in china where hongdian lives and there is the plastic feed the nib and feed are part of a collar assembly that unscrews easily for replacement maintenance or cleaning the section unscrews to reveal the included pen bbs size converter which has a reinforced nipple. I'd like to try a slippery nipple. <laughs> okay, you're cut off. And you don't have to be kinky to like your nipples reinforced. I'm petrified of nipple chafing. Once it starts, it is a vicious circle. Being pen BBS size means this pen will take Parker ink cartridges, but only the short version. The barrel is too short for the long ones or the long Lamy cartridge. And there is a silicone O-ring right here at the end of the threads of the section uh, to keep the barrel from coming loose while you're writing. Keeps it nice and snug there. The inside of the cap shows a plastic cap liner to seal the nib and keep it from drying out. The cap posts deeply and securely and does unbalance the pen because of its 17 and a half gram weight. Unposted, the pen is just long enough to write with and balances nicely in the hand. The section, as I said, isn't slippery, and this step down right here in these threads can hardly be felt. They are so smooth. 
If you post the pen, you can shift your grip back a little bit further like this to balance it. My thumb on the barrel and my fingers on the section are actually quite comfortable like this. I bought this pen from the Easy Buy store on Etsy for $17.99 US. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Hongdian 6016 with a Moonman P135, a Moonblanc M1000, a Moonman M6, and a Jinhao 9056. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. They're all number six size steel nibs, except for the P135, which is a number five size steel nib. And the doorstop, M I'm sorry, the Moonman M1000 uh, doesn't post. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Hongdian six zero one six, and it has a number six size steel. Fine nib. Let's check the wetness. This pen is nicely wet, and for a fine nib, it is wet and smooth. I've done nothing to this out of the box, and the nib is smooth with some feedback. And that just means you can feel the paper under the nib. And the ink today is J. Urbain Caroub de Chypre. Here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. This ink has some really very cool shimmer to it. The shimmer is in a copper color. So in the light, this reddish brown ink really has a nice shiny copper look to it. You'll try to catch it here on this page. Maybe you can see that in the light. Some angles, but uh, with the reddish brown color of the ink and that copper sheen, it really comes out looking like liquid copper. And I was hesitant to put this shimmering ink in this pen because usually fine nib pens do not handle the shimmer well because of the reduced ink flow. They tend to get clogged up. Now, as with most shimmering inks, you have to keep the ink flowing, meaning you have to keep using the pen. As long as you're filling it and writing with it regularly, clogging isn't usually a big problem. If you let it sit, the particulate will dry up, especially in the feed, and clog the ink flow. Cleaning your shimmer ink pens also takes a little bit more diligence and sometimes a soft toothbrush or those little dental flossers can help dislodge the shimmer from your feed. As to line variation, well, this is a very stiff Chinese steel nib and so you're not gonna get uh, much flex out of it. This line is 0.4 millimeters in thickness, which makes it a Western extra fine or a Japanese fine. And for our quote,
and some reverse writing. It's a little bit thinner and much, much drier, but it is fairly smooth. And some quick writing. Maybe you can hear the tooth and the feedback, the nib on the page, but there's no flow issues whatsoever. In fact, the flow of this nib, especially in fine, is what's keeping that shimmer coming through this ink on this fine nib. This is one of the first fine nibs I've had that actually allow a shimmer ink to, uh, to do its thing, which is really quite cool. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this pen? Well, visually, the pen is wonderful. The stamp patterns on the shiny cap are very attractive and interesting. The wooden barrel is smooth and lovely. I like that the cap posts securely, even though it does unbalance the pen. I like that it has a standard number six size nib. The larger nib, I think, balances the pen nicely and can be swapped with other standard number six size nibs if you like. The nib itself is very wet and smooth for a fine writer. I like the upscale metal reinforced converter and that it can be replaced by a pen BBS converter and that you can use Parker short cartridges. And I like the silicone o-ring added to the threads on the section to keep it from coming loose while writing. I like the fact that they added seven grooves uh, to the metal section to keep it from being slippery. And it's not, I'm very surprised. You hear that Visconti? Make the Visconti Van Gogh groovy and drop the price by 150 bucks and you have a deal. Uh oh, did I say that or just think it? I gotta think of a lie fast. This pen is a really nice compromise between the smaller Moonman P135 and the behemoth Moonman M1000. And I like the price. It's less than $20 US. And for that, you're getting a fairly nice functioning fountain pen. And now for what I don't like so much. Well, the clip, even though it's elegantly shaped, is almost useless. It's so stiff. That's what she said. I don't like the slop of the crazy glue on the end of my barrel. <clears throat> Who does? I know it's a bit much to expect superb quality control on a sub $20 Chinese pen, especially when you can't get it on a plus $200 Italian fountain pen. <laughs> but it's a flaw nonetheless. The cap is very heavy and does back weight the pen when it's posted. I don't like the almost three rotations to get that cap off and on. Uh, that borders on the tedious. But overall, this is a nice fountain pen that works well, is attractive, and a bargain at twice the price. If you want wood, this is one way to get it inexpensively. Now I have sheep, I need wood. <laughs> And there you have it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or down. Doesn't really matter, but it really helps. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you... for watching... And that's all she wrote. this.